What's up, it's Endymion, and it seems like every day there's new layers of the onion that's getting uncovered by the player base when it comes to various aspects of the modern gaming world. From Japanese players now accusing Ubisoft of portraying their homeland incorrectly, a Japanese magazine exposing Ubisoft for their blade in pandering, and a CD Projekt Red dev who's bending the knee to the mob over his opinions. Also, Activision Blizzard is accused of forcing white developers to participate in struggle sessions. And Warhammer has decided to announce a bunch of new products, and the female characters look god-awful, and that's putting it lightly. To begin, let's start with the Assassin's Creed stuff, of course, there's a ridiculous amount of things that are happening. Firstly, let's talk about CD Projekt Red. You know them as the devs behind games like The Witcher and Cyberpunk. They're also a developer that's based in Poland, which is obviously a European country filled with predominantly white people. Which likely bothers woke weirdos if you say that, but it's true, Poland is white and there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, even then, Poland has begun to be changed by the identity political correctness of the West that's infiltrating and ruining everything. This has been an ongoing war of ideas for a while now, which brings us to this article titled, CD Projekt Red's senior lead weapon artist apologizes for nothing criticism about Assassin's Creed Shadows is valid. The person in question here is senior lead weapon artist Mikhail Kalis, who said this via Twitter. The concerns and criticisms around Assassin's Creed Shadows are valid, and I personally think it might disrespect Japanese culture with the provided historical inaccuracy. People, especially Japanese people, have full right to oppose trends like this. And he's right. I think it's well within people's right to say, hey, this is weird and goes against our history because it does. While I wish Mikhail left his opinions at just that and moved on, clearly his real opinion caused some stir. He would then say this a bit later. I've noticed criticism regarding my recent comment about Assassin's Creed Shadows. After reflecting on it and reading your responses and retweets, I realize I owe you an apology. First of all, I acknowledge that I am not qualified to share statements or discuss such topics. Your feedback has highlighted the importance of being more informed and respectful in my opinions. It has also shown me that we should be more open to new ideas and not restrict ourselves too much while creating new worlds. We all draw inspiration from a wide range of media, and that's great. I appreciate your patience and understanding. I've learned something valuable and will strive to do better in the future. I'm looking forward to the next Assassin's Creed. The setting intrigues me a lot. We both know he only did this because he got backlash either from his higher-ups, co-workers, or people in the replies calling for CD Projekt to fire him for saying this, and I hate this sort of status quo. Because his original statement is right, it is offensive, and it is wrong, and the fact we have to sit here and openly act like reality is not real anymore, to appease people who live in made-up fantasies within their heads where anything that challenges them is hate speech is stupid. Mikhail should have never apologized, but we all know that his real opinion is still the first tweet anyways. He knows it's wrong, he knows it was done for pandering reasons. But very likely, some blue-haired feminist at CD Projekt read his tweet and either brought it to HR or started screaming autistically at the studio because his tweet caused her grief. I don't think people realize how damaging this sort of thing really is. The more you double down and reinforce these people's insane ideologies and beliefs, the worse these things will become. It's like a child who's never been disciplined for acting like a little terror. If the parents never address the behavior spurts but instead allow them to happen or encourage them, it will just lead to the child becoming more insufferable the older they become. That's basically what these people are. They're adult children who've never been told no. And since academia, their work, and the indoctrination camps they've gone through from school to college or university and beyond, they've been conditioned and created into these NPCs who think the world must conform to their every whim and can you really blame them? When all the various institutions of their lives has been gassing them up and constantly affirming their moronic beliefs. They're going to think everyone will be accepting of their ideas no matter what, and if they don't, they'll just do what they've done their entire lives when they don't get what they want. They'll shriek, cry, and threaten until they ultimately get what they want, and I think that's incredibly stupid and pathetic of our society in general. You raise people to be professional victims, and that's what they end up becoming, and now you have entire workplaces that are filled with these sorts of people who are walking legal and HR nightmares. Mikhail of CD Projekt Red said nothing wrong, originally anyway, but his apology, sadly, is the status quo. You step out of line and these insane people smell blood and attack, and I personally think we need to stop affirming and allowing people to get away with everything. You can just read the news and find plenty of stories of people doing weird behavioral things in society these days. Remember last year when that Starbucks employee attempted to normalize their diaper fetish where they would fill their diaper with whipped cream that was used for customer drinks? Wish I was kidding, but that was a real thing. Thankfully, the employee was fired because of health violations, but this is what I'm talking about. 
If you normalize any of this stuff, these weirdos will attempt to keep pushing the envelope, and that's why you have to stand up against it. Sadly for Mikal in the gaming industry, that's next to impossible as a developer since you're so easily replaceable. They either fall in line or they get blacklisted, which is ridiculous, but that's why I'm here, fellas. I don't care if they blacklist me, I'll say the truth anyways. Speaking of the truth, some Japanese fans have pointed out that Ubisoft is completely incorrect in a lot of their depictions of Japan as well. As one user pointed out on Twitter, the positioning of everyone in a single shot from the trailer where Yasuke is with Oda Nobunaga apparently makes no sense. Here's what the user said, The buildings at the time in Assassin's Creed are astounding as even experts are impressed, but this part in the trailer is already yabai. The person who looks like an aide of Nobunaga sitting on the same step as Nobunaga. Also, it's nonsensely tatami and even tatamis are square. Yabai here is of course very negative meaning. Yabai, by the way, means bad or dangerous in Japanese, and what this user is pointing out, because the translation might be slightly off, is that apparently Yasuke, if he was a samurai, would not be that close to Oda Nobunaga in an audience like that, especially since he was a retainer, which is actually below that of a samurai. So already the positioning is completely wrong, then as other Japanese users are pointing out from what I'm reading, the tatami, which is the name of the straw mats that Japanese people would sit on in their homes, is the wrong size in the Shadows trailer too. They're also apparently the wrong shape and would not be positioned how they're seen in the trailer, and the shoji screens, or the sliding doors if you will, are also apparently not correct either for the era this is taking place in at all. Of course, this is what these Japanese users are saying, and I figured they would probably know more about this stuff than I do, obviously. But it's hilarious how you have a game being made by liberal, woke Canadians about Japan, and in their first trailer, they can't even get hierarchy, seating, furniture, or set design right. Then, of course, another user pointed out that the way Naoe carries her sword on her back is also completely wrong too. And Japanese shinobi, or even samurais, would never put their katanas on their backs like this ever. The only time this was ever really a thing apparently was when it came to odachis, which are the huge katanas you've likely seen being used in video games. Something like Neo or Rise of the Ronin to name a few did this, and man, it keeps getting worse. Japanese players are also pointing out stuff where they said, I can notice that there is no Japanese advisor in the dev team also from this scene. Wearing a sword or full armor in the street, even Yasuke put the helmet on after this. It seems like a mistaken portrayal of Japan, like samurais are shown walking around in armor, is going to be released. So Yasuke walking around in full body armor with the helmet and everything would not be normal attire. It would be like an army veteran walking around modern day America right now in full combat gear when he's just going to the grocery store. So as you can see from these examples, Ubisoft hasn't really done their research. That's not to say that Western devs can't make Japanese era games, of course, since Ghost of Tsushima was made by Sucker Punch and they're not Japanese. And the difference is crazy since Ghost was so well received by Japanese fans for its authenticity that Sucker Punch were made ambassadors of Tsushima Island. And if you go to Tsushima, they actually advertise the game as a media property worthy of telling the historical story of the island. That's a huge win in my book, to be celebrated by a culture you don't originate from like that. It's amazing. But I mean, this is Ubisoft we're talking about. They haven't made an actual amazing game in years, and they're not about to start now, sadly. But why is this all happening? Well, Grums pointed out that he's been talking to people in the industry, and it's mostly Activision and Ubisoft, to nobody's surprise, that's pushing this nonsense the most. But this also brings me to this next article that kind of brings us all together. This one is from TheBlaze.com and it's titled, Game developer Activision Blizzard accused of hosting struggle sessions for white developers to discuss their privilege. According to Grums, who was interviewed by The Blaze, Activision has a DEI or Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer on every single project that they work on in the company. That's Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, everything, Diablo and more as well. They have all forced DEI being implemented on purpose. Grum said via Blaze, and I quote, I've been shocked at what my former co-workers have told me about Activision Blizzard. It's a very different place from what it used to be when the games were better and we left politics out of it. Blizzard now has struggle sessions where white developers must discuss their privilege and DEI emails go out every week. Non-mandatory meetings that are clearly and openly mandatory and now review forms that have you rate how well you DEI or ES. I've been told nearly every game design decision at Activision has to be run by DEI officers, their official title, that sit on the teams themselves. I hope that hasn't reached Blizzard itself, but I fear the worst." End quote. The Blaze also reached out to Activision, but they wouldn't comment on this, but this has been running amok at places like Activision and Ubisoft for a long time now. 
They've even created teams within their studios called IGD, which stands for Inclusive Game Design. As Activision puts it themselves, embedding advocates best practices and innovations in all of the company's games. This is to ensure that our games are the most diverse, welcoming, and inclusive. But it gets weirder, so beyond the IGD teams and the DEI groups, my god, how many acronyms do we need to explain this stuff? This then leads to these companies that are segregating their employees into what they call networks. Obviously, in game development, networks of teams make sense. You got your artists, UI designers, writers, animators, and so on. But now, because of everything I just described, you now have stuff like the LGBT plus employee network or the black employee network. And even the multicultural employee network, I guess the ones for people who are mixed like myself, I guess? I don't really know. But you're telling me that the West worked so hard to get rid of segregation only for woke lunatics to turn around and retroactively bring back the concept altogether. Why the hell are you making networks where people are separated and allocated based on things like skin or what they like in the sack? Isn't the point of inclusivity and all that to bring people together when all this does from what I'm seeing is tear people apart instead? You should have one network, the employees, and that's it. Bring everybody together. Who cares what color they are or anything else? How the hell have we regressed so much as a society like this in such a short span of time? This is a peak example of how you end up creating more echo chambers. Because now you've taken everybody who is the same and then you're putting them into groups. Remember when I said adults these days are just like children? This is what I mean pretty much. These people are being separated like fruits in a basket, and nobody has the common sense to look at any of this and think, wow, this is kind of insane and really weird. But these are the people who are making the games these days, professional victims with child complexes, thinking the world must revolve around them or they'll just take legal action. And like I said, the more you lean into giving these people what they want, the worse it'll get for you. These people are walking HR nightmare time bombs just itching for something to trigger them or go wrong so that they can explode and get validated for their moronic existences. As if all of that wasn't bad enough, how about a leaderboard at work to dictate your victimhood status, cause that's real too. It's called the inclusion score and it's described as a quantitative measure of the extent to which employees feel welcomed, valued, and included within the organization. So what you have now is HR and the higher-ups within these companies having to see employee scores go up and down in real time depending on their moods. It's like a sea of analytics and if you say anything that angers or troubles someone, their score might lower, which then in turn causes HR to get involved. So then the person says this guy in this network said this about me so now that I'm sad, so now you're in trouble because you caused the diversity hire to lower their employee inclusion score. And now you gotta go attend a mandatory struggle session to apologize for your privilege. Does this not sound like some insane Black Mirror concept to anyone else? How is this a real thing? And all of it is created by these companies so that they can effectively turn their own workplaces into the perfect human landmine simulator where their companies can work and progress can implode at any given moment. You can ask the fat lady in animation why her shoulders are so wide and boom, now you're getting strapped to a chair and forced to watch anti-white propaganda until you denounce your skin color. It's crazy, dude. It's insane. And these are the people in charge of these sorts of games like Diablo and Ascreed. We're pretty much a few steps away from having to wear armbands in order to tell which person is in what network. Oh, you asked Shanisha if she was pregnant, but she was actually just obese? Well, now you gotta wear this armband that says you're problematic. And we're gonna have to put you in the harmful employee network with the other employees who need behavioral training before they're allowed to associate with the other employees again. None of this is going to end well for anybody, and we need to realize the further down the rabbit hole we go in this direction, the worse it's gonna get for everyone involved. Eventually, this shit will just hit society in general, and it'll be like the Chinese social credit score, but somehow worse. You could say that Joe Biden looks like a Five Nights at Freddy's puppet wearing the skin of someone's dead grandfather and boom. Suddenly in Times Square, everybody sees your score lower due to your wrong thing. And then off to the gulag with you to repent for your sins for making a little funny, I guess. Let's finish up with the ass creed side of this video with Famitsu, who's a Japanese magazine that reviews games and posts news and all of that. They ended up interviewing the Ubisoft Quebec team about ass creed shadows recently and Famitsu ended up saying it how it is and it's hilarious. As Famitsu puts it themselves, we were first looking for our samurai, someone who could be our non-Japanese eyes. Twitter user Mongoloyer got a hold of a part of the interview and had it translated. So Famitsu asked Ubislop, why did you choose a historical figure like Yasuke and Naoe as your shinobi? They said and I quote, Although well known in Japan, at least in North America, not much is known about the story of the farmers, what happened to them, and where the ninja came from. 
So we decided to introduce a character from Iga who is shrouded in mystery. We considered historical figures from the area, but we preferred a sense of mystery. So we came up with Naue as someone who may or may not have actually existed. For Yasuke, we were first looking for our samurai. Someone who could be our non-Japanese eyes through. This is because we thought from the beginning the story of the Portuguese arrival would be a very good way to tell the crisis in Japan. The team liked the character Yasuke and we thought we could expect to use him to discover Japan. We thought that starting with a samurai already in Japanese society would make for a very interesting and intriguing character who was also concepts that we don't necessarily know about. And it would arouse our interest in what happened to him starting as a character who was already rooted in history. We will be starting to find out something happens around him which tickles our curiosity. We thought that if both come together, they would make a cool team complementing each other also in terms of storytelling, physique, and family background." End quote. What's weird is that no other Assassin's Creed protagonist was used to discover any other time period because no matter who we played as, we as the player were discovering the regions ourselves anyways. We'll just say it how it is, they did it for brownie points, that's it, there's no other reasoning for it. They did it to increase their ESG score, and probably so their employee inclusion score, or whatever it's called, doesn't lower because their networks of adult babies don't piss themselves crying in response. And I love this one excerpt from the official Ubisoft page for Shadows where they have this. Become a legendary samurai, as the charismatic samurai Yasuke strike your foes with brutal precision and power. Use his combat-oriented skills to attack, block, parry, and defeat your enemies. Master the vast arsenal of weapons at your disposal. Featuring Katana, Kanabo, Bows, Naginata, and more to free Japan from its oppressors. What oppressors are they referring to? During the time period in which the game takes place, the only real threat to Japan was technically Japan itself with all of the infighting. I guarantee you, whatever form the Order of the Ancients takes in this game, they're going to be led by a Jesuit 100%. I guarantee you that Ubisoft will find a way to make a white man or Portuguese man the main villain of their Japanese Ass Creed game when you play as a black guy that also wasn't a samurai. If you ask me, the only person committing crimes and oppressing Japanese people in this game seems to be Yasuke. He's a foreigner that's culturally appropriating their armor, customs, and languages, and he's just walking around Japan killing people without remorse with no backlash from the local populace. Yasuke is literally the oppressor, and we're playing as him. Old of Ubisoft to make their black DI character into a villain here, but it's tone deaf as hell too. Warhammer, or as I like to call it, Warham Her, has come under fire for their new sets that were showcased during a livestream. A specific one is tied to the Adepta, Sororitas, and the Army of Faith set. Players are claiming that Games Workshop has ruined the look of the Adepta with their mangled DEI fingers, because the actual models themselves look like battered old women who eat cigarettes for a living. Just look at these models. These companies are going out of their way to ensure everything is as ugly as humanly possible. They basically look like men with wigs on at best, and that's putting it nicely. Even the codex they've released alongside this new set just shows the differences alone. Look how the women are depicted on the codex, they're still gruff, sure, I mean it's Warhammer, but they at least look like women. Then you look at the figurines, which have all been raised in price across the board due to Games Workshop's new company mandate, and come on dude, who is this for? Ain't nobody gonna wanna buy a bunch of women who look like Ron Perlman with wigs for money. Everything has been turned ugly because it needs to reflect the insane people who advocate for this sort of thing. That's why now even the Adepta look like mangled crack fiends now instead of being, you know, actual women. It's wild to me how companies continue to self-sabotage themselves by pushing deliberate attempts at androgynous characters. They're not fooling anyone. And I doubt people are going to be buying this in hordes either. As if ruining one of your most popular factions for brownie points wasn't bad enough, now you're trying to normalize ugly female representation as well. What good does this do is my question. How do you think this makes the actual Warhammer female fans out there feel when they see this? Do they feel represented by these chain-smoking, bowl-cut haired, man-jawed women? If the women of your fandom can't relate and the men of your fandom reject this, congrats Games Workshop, you did it. You successfully made a product for absolutely nobody at all. I'm sure collectors will buy it because they can't help themselves, but for everyone else, it seems like a waste of resources to me. Or you could be like Stellar Blade, which recently developer Shift Up confirmed the game is sold beyond expectations, and now a PC port is in development as well as a sequel. Imagine that. You give people what they want and you end up getting rewarded for it. If only the Adepta Sororitas looked something like Eve from Stellar Blade, this stuff would be flying off the shelves. But then that would go against the agenda, of course, so we can't have that, I guess. 
But this is where we're at right now. Somehow Assassin's Creed is still in the news and keeps finding new ways to make everyone raise an eyebrow in confusion. And now we also have companies that are pushing employee inclusion scores and nonsense like Warhammer that believes women should be thankful for representation that looks god-awful. I'm sure the five women who look like Jeremy Clarkson are going to be very happy Games Workshop. Very nice. As always, let me know what you think, subscribe, like, and share the video, and have a wonderful day, question everything, and I'll see you soon.